Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this meeting. I'm sorry, we're a couple minutes late. We don't have any special announcements. This is the June 11th meeting. Call to order. There's a confirmation of quorum by our clerk. Any conflicts of interest? None. Then we shall proceed to the adoption of the agenda. I'm sorry, I forgot the welcome. Dear colleagues, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So for the adoption of the agenda, moved by Councillor Cormier, seconded by Councillor Leblanc. For the question, none. All those in favor? Same five is saying aye, contrary, nay. The agenda is adopted as presented. Item number seven, presentations. Inquiries, uh, inquiries by council members, Kodiak Regional RCMP, Superintendent uh, is here as always. Uh, any questions? No questions? That's good. Uh, do you have anything to say? Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I have an answer for Councillor Thibodeau. You asked me a question concerning cyclists. So we have already started operational activities. We've made announcements uh, for public services to educate the public, to tell them what their responsibilities are. So that will start next week. Thank you. I have another thing. Tomorrow we have private meetings with the three communities uh, concerning the new police station. On uh, Wednesday, we have on Thursday the next meeting with, with uh, appreciate authority. So you welcomed our councillor Alain, who's the new representative. Yes. Thank you, that's all. We have nothing respecting uh, comments by the superintendent? No. Thanks again, we continue. You may stay, but I'll understand if you leave. Questions from the public? Well, the public is very quiet this evening. So we shall continue with the adoption of minutes of the regular meeting held on May 28th, 2018. Moved by Councillor Gaudet, seconded by Councillor Arsenault. For the question? None. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary, nay. Minutes are adopted as presented. Inaudible. The motion is moved by Councillor Blanc and uh, seconded by Councillor Arsenault. For the question, none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary, nay. Minutes are adopted as presented. Thank you. Motions, memorandums, and nominations. Mr. Municipal Manager, thank you, Your Worship. As a first file, we have before you a proposition a management ag agreement between uh, Dieppe and um, really local horticultural cooperative and transient traders. We had discussion when we adopted a bylaw a few months ago. 
to allow the transient traders to settle a Dieppe market on Acadie, on the Acadie side, so we have an agreement. We have mapped it out, so we have a pilot project for one year, and then we'll have recommendations respecting its success or failure. So this is a one-year pilot project, and we need your authorization. For the reading of the resolution, Ms. Arsenault. Thank you, Your Worship. The Council authorized the municipal signing officers to sign the management agreement between the City of Dieppe and Really Local Horticultural Cooperative LTD pertaining to the management of transient trainers on a portion of the parking lot on properties situated at 301 Acadie Avenue, PID 70442470, and 232 Govan Road. PID 70442413. I so move, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Rossiano, seconded by Councillor Godet. For the question, none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary, nay. Adopted as presented. 10.1.2. You have a memorandum of understanding for a property tax program uh, with SDR, Regional Development uh, Society in the province. And we were approved for this initiative and we ask that the city adopts this uh, to be a partner with this uh, program. So we need the authorization of council with this memorandum of understanding. So for the information, for the public, can we have a few details on this? The program is to allow financial help for the lot in the industrial park when we have servants as the values of properties have increased. So we want uh, construction on industrial uh, park and it helps us with uh, property taxes if we have a development there. So this is an initiative. For the reading of the resolution, Councillor Le Boutier. The Council ratified the signature of the Memorandum of Understanding entitled Protocol d'Attente, Programme de Profoncier avec la SDR, dated May 29th, 2018, between the City of Dieppe and Expansion Dieppe. I so move, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Le Boutier, seconded by Councillor Brideau. For the question. None. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary. Nay, adopted as presented. 10.1.3. This is a request for exemption to the bylaw Z22 respecting external commercial signs. P of Saguin wants to promote its summer season, which is uh, coming up soon. And the reason for this organization to do that with respect to the language, the bylaw recognizes this and allows us to have an exemption for this request. So we recommend to accept the request and allow Paid Lassaguen to proceed with its program in French for the reading of the resolution. Councillor Allen. The Council authorized the Pays de la Saguen to proceed with unilingual francophone external commercial signage. Moved by Councillor Alain, moved by Councillor Leblanc for the question. Mr. Bridou, Your Worship, uh, I would like to know, we give uh, the right to Pays de la Saguen uh, to have francophone external signage in English, unilingual. What, what if it had uh, an Anglophone company that wanted to have this type of request in English only? How would that proceed? 
In principle, I will ask uh, Mr. Melasso, all the exemptions to this bylaw must go before council who will do the evaluation and we will have a recommendation on whether or not we approve. Thank you. No other questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary minded nay. Carried as presented. 10.2.1. This is a directive uh, given by council to personnel. We've heard this in the news lately. This is uh, to um, close the velodrome and demolish it. So we're looking for direction. Thank you for the reading of the resolution. Councillor Goodet. The council give a directive to the culture, leisure and community life department personnel to permanently close the velodrome located at the Rotary Saint Dassin Park. I so move. Moved by Councillor Godet, uh, seconded by Councillor Thibodeau. For the question, none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary minded, nay. Carried as presented. 10.2.2. Mr. Lazo. This is a tender award uh, for our site. Uh, for the Place Santana, we had three people who applied. We had three estimates. One was quite high, but right now we have a cost of $1,432,167 plus HST. And we numbered the places where we're going to, the funds where we're going to make transfers. So we evaluated the importance of this site, but it's uh, respecting the Congrès Mondial Acadien in 2019. So we're going to do construction for that and Jeux Francophonie Internationale for 2021. So we want to proceed because these events are quite important. So we want to discuss with this company to see if we can get a better price. But right now we recommend this, the adoption of this contract and we're going to keep discussing with the contractor for the reading of the resolution. Councillor Cormier. I have no screen. Technical problems for Councillor Comier. Councillor Gadet. The council award the tender for the development of the event space at Santana Place to the lowest bidder, being Modern Construction LTD at the total cost of $1,432,167. Plus HSD and authorized that this expenditure should be defrayed from account number three three seventy twelve seven six one two general capital budget Santanar event space. The council authorized the following budget transfers to account number three three seventy twelve seven six one two general capital budget Santanar event space. One million sixty-seven dollars from account number three three thirty twelve seventy six zero four general capital budget intergenerational complex two hundred thirty-one thousand dollars from account number three three five fifty eight seventy six thirty six general capital budget Melanson Trail. $124,000 from account number 3370127613, general capital budget, Belfare Trail. $72,000 from account number 74202989.20, general capital reserve fund, uncommitted, culture, leisure, and community life department. I so move. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Godet, seconded by Councillor Cormier for the question. Mr. Leblanc. Thank you, Your Worship. I would like to note that the transfer of funds 
from Sentier Molassan and Belle Forêt for these two projects. We have had savings in these. I just wanted to let the public know. So we have one company who's eating up the profits that we've had on other projects. What his has been a, identified as savings is on the electrical uh, electrical planet. So that's 40% extra. I know that we're in a hurry because we need it, but we want to do things well. Councillor Alain, that was my uh, next uh, comment, uh, Your Worship. On the chronology, if we have a show on August 15, 2019, and uh, we have uh, another one, 2020, another event. Uh, so we'll still have uh, this at uh, the Satnar. So we said that we would go for this. I think citizens in Dieppe should have more information on this project. It's a big project. And we see that the over budget, it's a huge expense, and we asked the residents to invest 5.5 million in this, and it's a service that will help the whole region. But even as councillors, we do not have enough uh, information. And the cost to operate it as well. So I still have a lot of concern. When I look at this budget, I have huge concerns. I don't want to start a project in a bad position. Is it a two-phase project? And for August 15, 2019, will the arena, will it be demolished? Is that included in $1.4 million we're talking about now? No. So uh, this intergenerati intergenerational site has three lots with the arena. So 1.4 million is just for the arena. We have to start this year because we want to have a mature site and not repeat the bad experience at the Dover site when we had our kite flying event. So we want a mature a grass. So that's why we want to start this year. We have a partnership with the organization to share costs of construction. So we're discussing that at the time being. But for the site, the operational costs will be minimal because they will have a few events and the cost will be recovered. So we will have a trail. And so it will be minimal compared to the cost we're paying now to, uh, to manage the site or to do the upkeep. I would like to make more efforts to diminish the costs for the residents of Dieppe. This is a big investment for the intergenerational complex. I want more information on this investment. I feel that I haven't had enough information. We can share that with you. I know there, there will be. We'll do that. Thank you. Anybody else? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Contrary, nay. Carried, as presented. Next item, 10.2.2, sorry, 10.3.1. So here we have a tender award. It's added to a contract to repair asphalt. Uh, in 2018, initially we wanted to do microsurfacing on Champlain Street between uh, here and uh, our 
neighboring city and a Cadiz street. So the team thought they wanted to do patching because the quality of the asphalt did not permit microsurfacing. The contract stipulates a certain number of tons, so we have to come back to council to add 50,000. We have the funds because we had the money for microsurfacing and we're going to share this with the province as well. So it's just to add to the contract that we have already in place. Thank you for the reading of the resolution. Councillor Bridou. Thank you, Your Worship. The council authorized an addition to the contract for the project entitled 2018 Asphalt Repairs with Dexter Construction Company Limited at the additional cost of $50,000 plus HST in order to carry out the required repair work on Champlain Street and further authorize that this expenditure be defrayed from account number 1, 2, 35, 63, 26, 15, General Operation Fund Asphalt Repair. I so move. Moved by Councillor Brideau, seconded by Councillor Cormier. For the question, Councillor Leblanc. Thank you, Your Worship. This additional cost of $50,000, is it beyond what was uh, foreseen for the asphalt? It's more than the contract that we had for the repair of the asphalt at to Dexter. So we're saving on microsurfacing, but we're adding 50,000 on asphalt. So the cost we had uh, budgeted for microsurfacing, what was that? Mrs. Spencer, what was indicated in the report? We had $50,000 for microsurfacing or 250,000, but we're gonna use 50,000 for repairs, so we'll still have a balance of $200,000 as savings. So this amount will go into reserve. A part will be not be recuperated. Uh, the province is paying 50% with respect to designated highways, and the balance will be put in reserved and not dedicated right away. It's an operational expense because microsurfacing is operational as an expense. Any questions, uh, Councillor Leblanc? Good. Councillor Thibodeau. Thank you, Your Worship. If I understand, the money that we were supposed to get from the province, we've lost that? Will the province uh, give us give it to us the next year so we can do the work, Ms. Spencer? Of course, we'll make the request. But the only amount uh, that we can recover is fifty thousand of fifty thousand dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary, nay. Carried as presented. 10.4.1. This is a, a request to amend the conditions established under zoning bylaw Z841. I'll give you a resume. Mr. Frenette can maybe help me. If you well remember, we had a request for a project on Dia Boulevard at the corner of Ivan and Dia Boulevard. We had established uh, certain conditions passed by the planning committee, and this uh, was in 2015. So we've passed uh, this limit, so the the contractor is asking, is making another request. So we're starting this process all over again. He confirms that this project has not changed in context except for the time. So there's a new procedure for rezoning and we have to go through the whole process again and with the uh, planning advisory committee. So tonight we want to have a public hearing in June at the city hall to advise residents of this exercise. 
with the information that we have received and the planning advisory committee will uh, receive this information on June 18th and will give us its recommendations for the reading of the resolution. Councillor Asselion. The council schedule a public hearing on July 9th, 2018 at the DF City Hall to present proposed changes to the conditions related to zoning bylaw Z841 registered at the registry office under number 34704115 on March 26, 2015, relating to the property identified under PID 7061108 and located at the intersection of Yvonne Street and Dia Boulevard. And the council requests the written views of the Planning Advisory Committee and extend the deadline pursuant to Article 110, brackets 3, of the Community Planning Act to July 18th, 2018. I so move your worship. To confirm the number of the registration office, it's 3470115. 3470115. That's good. Seconded by Councillor Cormier for the question. Mr. Alain. The amendment, they have until 2018 to do it and they didn't do it. So the date had passed, three, three years had passed, or they're asking for another three years? Yes. It's as if it's a a new request. It's a new application. Is this normal? That the contractor asks for an extension for another three years? Are there any limits? Can we add maybe just one year? It's possible. This application was for three years. We could ask for less. But uh, we could come back after one year or two years before council. That's a possibility. But we've brought a lot of rezoning applications before you. And it's about 60 or 70 percent of the projects that have gone by that we presented. Usually there's a a time limit of three years. Are there any other amendments aside from that? Is that the only one? Yes. Thank you. Other questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Country minded nay. Moved as presented. 10.5.1. Mr. Renasso. This is a tender award for main water and sewer lines repair on Andrea Court. The contractor, McDonald Paving Construction, for 91935000 plus HST, and we're asking for the amount of $100,000 to be transferred from the budget. And you have the accounts before you for this transfer, so we... We're asking you to proceed for this work, and it's quite urgent. Summer and and spring finally have arrived. We're doubting a little bit about summer, but for the resolution, Mr. Alain. The council award the tender for the project entitled Main Water and Sewer Lines Repairs, Andrea Court, to the lowest bidder being McDonald Paving and Construction LTD at the cost of $91,935 plus HST and authorize that this expenditure be defrayed from account number 2295603120, Water and Sewer Operating Budget Repair and Maintenance Materials. The council authorized a budget transfer in the amount of $100,000 from account number 7420128930, 
Water and Sewer Operating Reserve Fund to account number 2295603120, Water and Sewer Operating Budget Repair and Maintenance Materials. I so move, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Alain, seconded by Councillor Thibodeau for the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye, contrary, nay. Moved as presented. 10.5.2, Councillor Malanson. I know summer's not here, but this is for road salt supply for 2018, 2019 for the winter season. So we're asking uh, the tender is for to X and sells K and S cell Windsor Limited, the cost of $135,680,000. So this is the same company that we bought from last year and we had no problem with their salt. I just wanted to make sure. So we're, uh, this acquisition is uh, with the contract with the province. Councillor Thibodeau, the council awarded the tender for the purchase of Rogues Hall to KNS Cell Windsor LTD at the cost of $135,680,000 plus HST for the 2018-2019 winter season and authorized that this expenditure be defrayed from account number 12356526645 General Operating Budget, Salt and Send. I so move. Moved by Councillor Thibodeau, seconded by Councillor Cormier for the question. No question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Contrary minded, uh, nay. Moved, uh, carried as presented. For the bylaws now, 11.1.1. Eleven point one. This is third reading by title only. Eleven point one point one. Reading in its entirety. I went too fast to third reading. So it, for reading, I do I have a volunteer, Mr. Thibodeau? You were silent this evening, so you can catch up now. Thank you, Your Worship. Bylaw number Z, 192018, a bylaw of the City Municipality of Deb relating to the installation of a water system along Margaret Street pursuant to Section 117 of the Local Governance Act. Uh, Pursuant to the authority vested in by the Local Governance Act, SMB 2017, Chapter 18, the Council of the Municipality of Diab duly assemble and acts as follows. Definitions. Two recoverable costs, uh, calculation of its user charge for existing users, five uh, new users, and users who are not connected, uh, seven, right to withhold water, and eight, repeal. I so move your worship. Moved by Councillor Thibodeau for the question. No questions. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary minded, nay. By law Z uh, 192018. Is carried uh, in third uh, reading or in its entirety. So now we will proceed to third reading by title only. Councillor Thibodeau. Bylaw number Z 192018, a bylaw of the municipality of Dieppe relating to the installation of water system along Marguerite Street pursuant to section 117 of the Local Governance Act. I so move uh, by title only. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Thibodeau, seconded by Councillor Leblanc for third reading. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary minded, nay. Resolution is adopted in third and last reading. Permet maintenant. 
Now we shall proceed with bylaw number Z202018 respecting water system along the Nassau Road for the reading in its entirety. This is Z20. Z20, bylaw Z20, a bylaw municipality of Dieppe relating to the installation of water system along La Salle Road. Councillor Leblanc for the reading. Thank you, Your Worship. Bylaw number Z202018, a bylaw of the municipality of Dieppe relating to the installation of water system along La Salle Road pursuant to section 117 of the Local Governance Act. Pursuant to the authority vested in it by the Local Governance Act, SMB 2017, Chapter 18, the Council of the Municipality of Dieppe duly assembled and acts as follows. One, definitions. Two, uh, usage. Three, calculation of user charge. Four, existing users. Five, new users. Six, users not connected to water. Seven, seven, right to withhold water. Eight, repeal. Moved by Councillor Leblanc and seconded by Councillor Leblanc for the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary, my nay. Adopted as presented. Now we will proceed to a third reading by title of Z20, 2018. Bylaw Z 2018, a bylaw of the municipality of Dieppe relating to the installation of water system along with Lassa Road, pursuant to section 117 of the Local Governance Act. I so move third reading by title only. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Brideau. Seconded by Councillor Brideau. Do all those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary minded, nay. Bylaw Z 2020-2018 is uh, accepted in a third and last reading. Thank you. Now we shall proceed to Bylaw Z 21-2018 concerning installation of a sanitary sewer system along La Salle Road. Reading in its entirety, Mrs. Arsenault. Thank you, Your Worship. Bylaw number Z21-2018, a bylaw of the municipality of Dieppe relating to the installation of a sanitary sewer system along Melanson Road pursuant to section 117 of the Local Governance Act. Pursuant to the authority vested in it by the Local Governance Act, SMB 2017, Chapter 18, the Council of the Municipality of Dieppe duly assemble and acts as follows. One, definitions. Two, cost recoverable on user charge basis. Three, calculation of user charge. Four, existing users. Five, new users. Six, users not connected to sanitary sewer service. Seven, right to withhold water. Eight, repeal. I so move. Reading in its entirety. Thank you. Moved by Madame Marcineau, seconded by Councillor Godet for the question. No questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Country minded nay. Carried. As presented, now we have the third and last uh, reading of bylaw Z21 2018 by title only. Bylaw number Z21-2018, a bylaw of the municipality of Dieppe relating to the installation of a sanitary sewer system along Melanson Road, pursuant to section 117 of the Local Governance Act. I so move third reading by title only. Thank you, moved by Councillor Arsenault, seconded by Councillor Godet for the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. A contrary minded nay. Carried as presented. 
Now, bylaw number S9, item 11.4, prohibiting excessive noises in its entirety by the Council of Municipality of Dieppe for the reading. Councillor Bridou. Thank you, Your Worship. Bylaw number S9, 2018, a bylaw of the City of Dieppe prohibiting excessive noises. Pursuant to the authority vested in it by the Local Governance Act, Chapter 18, the Council of the Municipality of Dieppe duly assemble and acts as follows. One, definitions. Two, prohibitions. Three, exemptions. Four, application to make noise. Five, offenses and penalties. Six, repeal. I so move, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Brideau, seconded by Councillor Le Boutier. For the question. None? All those? A question? Councillor Thibodeau. Thank you, Your Worship. How do you define excessive? That's a good question. Do we have measurables for decibels, number of decibels, equipment? I shall ask uh, uh, Mr. Sima, our legal advisor. It's not easy to answer that, yes, but uh, we have equipment that uh, can evaluate uh, decibels, and we usually limit to 55 decibels. So the noise on a construction site and that type of thing. At the city here, we're not equipped uh, to do this. Uh, this is a gray zone. When we have uh, complaints, uh, we evaluate whether it's excessive or not. So we just go by good faith and what we think is reasonable. Obviously, it opens the door to uh, contestation, but you have to know that here in the city of Dieppe, we work on educating people. Our first reflex is not to give fines, but it's to meet people. Our um, bylaw officers uh, take care of this. We do it often with respect to noise. For instance, some people ha have wind chimes that move with the wind. It doesn't have a high number of decibels, but it, uh, has, it makes noise and disturbs people while they're sleeping. So um, we'll uh, talk to people usually and they're respectful. To manage this bylaw is not an easy task. Thank you. I wanted to ask the question because in the definitions of excessive noise, I just wanted to understand because I've heard complaints from citizens about neighbors who are playing music uh, too loudly during the day. And it disturbed uh, this person. It was a quiet area. And uh, this uh, was noise that uh, bothered her during certain periods of the year. And another thing I saw in here is that we formally would allow private parties from 7 p.m. To, to 11 p.m. And we already received complaints up to 10 p.m. But there are exceptions 
as we do it for special occasions. I would suggest we can uh, have an amendment. Uh, we can go through that right now. It was 3M. It already says uh, till 11 p.m. up until 11 p.m. Is this a, an amendment from the last one? Yes, it's amendment that we had discussed because it's written in blue here. You have the version at page 153 and that's the version with changes and there were changes made and we decided to put it at uh, 10 p.m. Okay, in that case, it's okay. That's good. Any other questions, Councillor Cormier? Thank you, Your Worship. Does this equipment cost a lot of money? to measure decibels. And the reason I ask this is because I spent a lot of time in arenas in Dieppe for hockey games and the music, according to me, is very loud. And I'm asking myself this question do we contribute to hearing problems for youth and uh, older people too? But for our, our youth that go to hockey games, could it hurt them? Because I think that the music is really loud during hockey games. Thank you for this observation. <clears throat> but that's this is not the forum to discuss it right now, but it's something that we could consider. We all know Mr. Meloso. I will talk to the team of leisure services and we'll talk about it and the nurse exterior ports. Uh, fields too, and we'll have a discussion to see how loud would it be reasonable to play the music. Maybe we could better manage the situation. We could uh, work uh, with with them, and maybe the we could look at the amount of time that people we would be exposed to a high level of decibels. It could be a question of safety. We should maybe have comparisons at the arena. Maybe it's not always excessive on a long period. I don't want to get into technical details of the impact of health and safety, but I think uh, it could be discussed. And Mr. Malasa has promised that he would do that. Any other questions? On that, uh, Mr. Thibodeau, can we check to see how much it would cost, this equipment? I don't think it's a whole lot of money. It's a kind of instrument, a kind of instrument where the costs have been reduced over the last decade. Yeah, that would be good to know how many decibels that we could allow. Yes, thank you. Thank for this resolution. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Contrary minded, nay. So we accept a reading and it's uh, integrity by law. 
9S2018 uh, to prohibit excess, uh, prohibiting excessive noise in the city of Dieppe. I so move, uh, proposed by Councillor Thibauteau and seconded by Councillor Le Boutier. For a third and last reading by title only. All those in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye, contrary, nay. <laughs> by law S9 2018 is accepted. And third and final reading 12. Notice of motions, none. Now, 13 inquiries and announcements by members of council. <clears throat> I need help here. We will begin uh, to my right. Uh, Councillor Godet, thank you, Your Worship. I have two points to mention tonight. Firstly, I received information from citizens living on some streets that have uh, parking problems near Amiro. And certainly during the winter, because there's a daycare on the other side of the street, and people that work there park their cars on that street all day, from morning till night, and not on their own lot, and it causes problems during the winter, even with school buses who tried to come into Amiru Street. One of the conditions when you look at the senior's home just beside it, that street, when the construction permits were given for the senior's residence, it was indicated that people that worked there could not park on the street. And that request was not made for the daycare. So residents have a problem right now because there are four or five cars that are parked close to Amiro all day. And they would like us to discuss this. It will be noted. <clears throat> the second thing I would like to mention is with communications. I would like to think about citizens' needs with respect to communications, especially events taking place in Dieppe. We had a meeting on family policies, and we talk about communications. People want to know what is happening in Dieppe, but one of the problems that I see since about a year now is that the calendar of the city is not available for our accredited organizations and their events in DM. A review, Riverview does it, and so does Moncton. The citizen or the club can use their calendars to announce they have meetings events, or other things. I remember we had discussions with Councillor Cormier last year. The Seniors Committee had a breakfast at the club Rotary Saturday mornings, couldn't even communicate with the residents. So I think it would be a good opportunity. It takes a bit of time for employees to do that, but if Riverview can do it, I think we could too. We should consider it seriously. Residents should know what's going on. And maybe if we had this calendar for community events, we could increase the use of the city's website. And if you look at the residents that use the website, and they're 
email to contact the city, we could improve things. Thank you. It's noted. We'll give you feedback on that. Thank you. Councillor Godet, uh, Councillor Leblanc. Thank you, Your Worship. I have a question and a comment. Would it be possible to look at, to take uh, notes on the speeds of our streets? There's, a, there's gonna be new school in September, and a few times uh, we walk on Fox Creek Road and you notice that cars are going quite quickly. I think uh, we should have a sign indicating the speed limit. And I could ask the RCMP to do something about it on Fox Creek Road. Maybe they could watch for cars that are speeding. Thank you, Your Worship. Every time that we finish a street and it's nice and we have other problems, there's three steps. People complain because the roads aren't nice and then they complain because of the construction and then they're complaining because people are driving too fast on it. Councillor Colmier, thank you, Your Worship. I would like to thank uh, Superintendent, because I'm, con I'm finishing my two-year mandate on his committee for public safety, and the school year is ending, and I would like to invite our youth to be careful on the streets when they have uh, activities and events. This is the teacher here again. Councillor Brideau, thank you, Your Worship. I would like to mention that I had the chance last week with my colleague, Councillor Arsenault, to meet Daniel Henko of the Dragon's Den, the French version, L'Oeil du Dragon. And it was very interesting. We had exchanges of ideas with her and she uh, told us about uh, her life as a young woman and how she got to where she is now. And it was organized by Three Plus. It was a wonderful experience. We had a good exchange for advice for people, for companies or people that want to go to their show too, what they're looking for, for information. And she told us that people go there to sell their product, but they're not at all ready to face them because they're asked questions and it's in public. So her message was get ready. And if you want to sell your product, you have to be convincing. So that was her message, essentially. It was quite interesting. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Brideau. Madame Henko was in the region, and she met uh, the team of Expansion Dieppe and the Board of Directors. It was a wonderful visit for everybody. And she's uh, very intelligent. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Le Boutillier, I have nothing for tonight. Councillor Thibodeau, thank you. I have a suggestion for the survey that we had last week on the state of three municipalities. It was presented to us uh, with the results globally for the three communities. I would like to analyze it by community. For the fusion always comes back in the media as well as with our neighbors to, they're trying to promote fusion, but our citizens are not in agreement. And we know that 
this uh, survey was answered by 92% of Acophones, so it's not the population of Dieppe. I would like to analyze it community by community separately. Let's say that the analysis is available. We had a copy of the details and we're discussing it with our communication services to explain the results. Of course, some of the information we received that you shared already is 92% of the responders were Anglophone and 8% Francophones, of course. It explains in part some results. But I'm going to the same thing I said to the newspapers, the media, that I'm happy with the results for the city of Dieppe respecting services or installations. We're in first place in the large majority of most categories. And I think a council and our staff are comfortable with that. But on the question of uh, sentiments uh, with fusion, there's a lot of work to do in the way the questions are asked and uh, globally, when you look at the statistics, of course it's clear that Riverview are against the Dieppe it's about 65% in Moncton. They want to come and get $3 billion worth of uh, tax. Uh, so average of Greater Moncton has improved by statistics of Dieppe and Riverview. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Madam Councillor Arsenault, thank you, Your Worship. I have two things to mention. From May 31st to June 3rd, I was at the FCM, uh, Federation, uh, Canadian Federation of uh, Municipalities. The presentations were exciting. Uh, there were 2,000 delegates from different cities all across Canada. It was very interesting. June 8th, I went to the University of Moncton for the prizes for the graduates of second year, specialized studies in family medicine. There were six uh, graduates. One was Marie-Josée Leblanc, a young girl from Dieppe. I'm very proud that we had one girl from Dieppe out of 16 people who received a diploma in family medicine and who will stay here in New Brunswick to work. So congratulations to all of them, very proud of them, and the province as well, that we have P16 graduates. Thank you, Councillor Arsenault. Councillor Alain. I have a lot to say, but I'm going to try to go quickly. Congratulations, Aglebur, the men's team, for the, the induction and the new singer, Louise Ambo. Thank you and good luck. Uh, she's a jewel for Dieppe University of Moncton. For provincially, I have two messages. One, there's a recent announcement for a synthetic uh, field in an Anglophone high school. And there's a third announcement in a high, Francophone high school, as I want to support synthetic uh, Fields in Dieppe was a request I made in 2017 for the youth complex for a project uh, like that here in Dieppe. I'm convinced that our youth in Dieppe have the right to a synthetic field. Secondly, I'm strongly for um, a gay pride crosswalk 
they need our support and I support these organizations so I think we should have these uh, these pride crosswalks it's important for me and my family and I want to wish uh, happy Father's Day to everybody around the table and everybody in the hall all fathers that's it your worship thank you I have nothing to add, so have a good evening, everyone.